Thank you for considering Wilson Art HD Sinks. The following video provides a quick overview of our three installation methods. The box label identifies the sink design and color. Inspect your Wilson Art sink prior to beginning the fabrication process. Most Wilson Art HD sinks are marked for center faucet placement to help in the installation of plumbing fixtures. Also, a slight indentation is located in the front wall of every HD vanity to indicate the overflow location. Check for flatness of the sink flange on a flat work surface. Mark the sink location on the substrate with a set of vertical and horizontal center lines. Align the registration marks on the flange with your center lines. With a marking device, trace the sink perimeter leaving an eighth inch gap between the marked line and the rim of the sink. Using a three quarter inch paddle bit, drill a hole on the inside of the outline. This will be the starting point for your jigsaw. Using a jigsaw, cut the substrate along the marked outline of the sink. Keep the cutout for the laminate bonding process. Index the laminate with the substrate. With a marking device, trace the inside perimeter of the cutout onto the back side of the laminate. Dry fit the sink in the cutout. Ensure there is an eighth inch gap or less between the sink flange and the substrate. Place three quarter inch thick wood support strips around the entire perimeter of the cutout on the underside of the top. Minimum two inch wide strips are required. Strips should extend over the cutout area not to exceed a half inch. Attach the wood strips with wood glue and properly sized screws or nails. These wood strips will support the sink flange. Flip your countertop over and center the sink in the cutout on the wood support strips. Sink flanges are pre-trimmed three quarters of an inch. If adjusting is necessary, laminate chips may be used under the flange. The sink should sit slightly higher than the substrate. The gap between the sink flange and the substrate should be filled with auto body filler such as Evercoat or comparable product. Mix the filler according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Apply the filler into the gap between the sink and the substrate, making sure the gap is filled throughout the thickness of the substrate. Once the filler is completely cured, use a belt sander with coarse grit sandpaper to sand the rim of the sink and filler. Keep the belt sander level, sanding the sink rim flush with the substrate. Verify flatness of the sink flange to the substrate. Flat sanding here is critical. Over sanding or dips will cause a telegraphing issue with the laminate. On the back side of the laminate, align the sink cutout with the previously marked outline to eliminate contact adhesive where the sink will be bonded. Apply contact adhesive per manufacturer's recommendations to the laminate. Place the same substrate cutout over the sink flange and ensure the edges of the sink are completely covered, preventing adhesive from getting on the flange. Now you're ready to spray your substrate. Clean the sink flange and laminate bonding area with denatured alcohol and a clean white cloth. Be sure to remove ink from backside of the laminate at bonding locations. Prep the 8230 sink seam adhesive. Slowly purge the cartridge and mixing tip to ensure proper mixing of the adhesive. You can run a small test bead on a scrap piece of laminate to let you know when the adhesive has dried. Apply a single 3 16 inch bead of adhesive along the inside edge of the sink flange. 
Index the laminate using 3 8 inch dowel rods. Bond the laminate to the substrate using the manufacturer's recommendations and procedures. A J roller is recommended for applying adequate pressure to the laminate surface. Place the sink cutout or larger sized board over the sink area. Add 5 pounds of weight. Allow the seam kit to cure completely before moving or routing. Drill a 3 quarter inch or larger pilot hole approximately 2 inches from the inside edge of the sink flange. Be sure not to drill over the faucet deck area. There are three basic ways to route and profile the laminate. Wilson Art HD sink router bits, a laminate tilt base router with a bottom bearing bit, and the Art Betterly acrylic sink trim router. You may refer to the fabrication guide for more detailed use of the tools specific for each installation method. In this video, we will use the Wilson Art HD sink router bits. Using the Wilson Art HD straight bit with a laminate trim router, cut out the center laminate section. Moving in a clockwise direction, apply mild pressure to the bevel edge of the sink. Use medium speed to move the router. Make sure to support the center laminate section while routing. It should be flat and not sagging. To easily set the height of the router bit so it does not come in contact with the faucet deck, place a laminate chip or scrap laminate on the faucet deck and allow the bearing to rest on the laminate sample. Tighten your router base and you're ready to go. Using a variable speed router between 16 and 18,000 RPM will prolong the life of the carbide router bits. Profile the laminate using the Wilson Art HD bevel profile bit with a laminate trim router. This will provide a close cut to the bevel of the sink and in some cases slightly cutting into the sink itself. Together these two bits will minimize tool wear and sanding in the next step. When finishing the bevel edge use a random orbital palm sander starting with 150 grit and finish with 220 grit sandpaper. Finish out the sanded bevel using a gray 3M scotch bright pad. To activate the overflow, locate the indentation on the front of the sink. Use a 3 8 or half inch paddle bit and carefully drill through the acrylic surface taking care not to drill too far past the acrylic layer. Sand the overflow hole to remove sharp edges. This concludes the filler method.